What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 11 of the Golang tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be doing is learning how we can actually parse this XML document. So uh, just in case for the inevitability when uh, the Washington Post, uh, the sitemap index basically here, it, when it ever it happens to change or whatever, something else goes wrong because it almost certainly will, especially on a long enough timeline. Um, uh, this is the structure of it, and then at the end, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you guys how you can convert that. But just know that that's the structure, and you can either use your own sitemap index that you found from, or sitemap rather that you find from somewhere else, um, or uh, or you can you can convert this basically. So if you want to if you want to be able to do that, I'll put a link or something to the text-based version of the tutorial, so you can uh, still follow along, even if for whatever reason you can't use the exact same one that we're using. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use uh, one more package and that's the encoding slash HTML pa or uh, XML package. So uh, that's going to be encoding slash XML. And we're going to use that to unmarshal into basically the structure that is um, the XML structure. So it's going to we're gonna we could do this ourselves totally from scratch without using encoding.xml or slash xml um, but that would be really tedious whereas this is kind of already built to accept it we just need to kind of give it the structure of the data that we're trying to decode really so um, let's go ahead and get started so the first thing that I'm gonna do is kind of clean this up we're not anymore gonna use string body or print that line out uh, so now what we want to do is we need to define the structure of this uh, this XML document. So first I'm going to do a type sitemap index. Um, that's going to be a struct. And then inside it, basically at the end of the day, what do we want? So we want capital locations as the value. And it's going to be an array of the location type, which doesn't yet exist. Um, and then we kind of describe, this is for when we go to unmarshal it. The tag that it's under so that's xml colon and then double quotes don't forget those sitemap the other thing you don't want to forget um it, that's a little less obvious in my opinion is that you must capitalize these values if you don't capitalize these values um they won't be exported when you go to 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 use uh, to unmarshal it basically it's gonna see that oh that's really supposed to be like internal basically so it won't export it you won't get any values from it and that's really annoying I got stuck on that for way too long <laughs> that was annoying so anyways uh, locations of location type and then what's happening here um, basically it's going to be an um, in this case a slice and slices basically let me just run through slices really quickly and arrays uh, basically Anything that is, you know, square brackets with a number in it, uh, and then a type, whatever that type happens to be, that is, um, that's an array. Anything that doesn't have a number in it, and a type, that's a slice. They're pretty much the same thing. The only difference is this is of a fixed size. You could also have like a five by five, for example. That's going to be an array. This is going to be a slice. So, for example, five by five int. That's a you know five by five integer array, whereas here this is just some sort of integer slice of some kind. In our case here, we've got locations. It's a slice of location types. We don't really know what those are yet, um, so we need to define those. So while we're talking about it, let's go ahead and do that. Type uh, location struct, and here it's going to be the location again. Don't forget it must be capital L O C string. It's gonna so that's of string type, and then where's it located? That's gonna be XML um, under the loc loc tag. Obviously, that must be lowercase because that's the you know the tag itself is lowercase. Okay, now what we can do is come down here, <coughs> and um, and we can do var s, and var s is gonna be a sitemap index type. And now we can unmarshal into that. So we're going to do XML dot capital U unmarshal. And then where do we want to, uh, or what do we want to unmarshal? That's going to be bytes. And then where do we want to? Well, we're going to unmarshal at the, uh, basically into the memory address of S. So now that we've done that, uh, let's go ahead and see what we're looking at. So we should be able to format dot print line 
uh, s dot locations because that's going to be our basically our uh, our slice of data. So let's go ahead and save that and run it and see how we've done. Uh, go run go tut dot go. Okay, so what we get here is pretty much like we expected. And if you're not, you know, if, if you're not new to programming, you're probably some flags are going off. But but anyways, here are all the URLs. So we're very very close to what we wanted, but. It looks odd. Like we, we can see the brackets here, which kind of denotes list or array or something, which is like, yeah, that's what we wanted. But then we have like these curly braces. Well, the reason why we have these curly braces is what we have here is it's still basically it's not a string yet. Like so so the sitemap index so like of this type, um, yes, it's got a location slice, and yeah, the location itself is a string, but we actually need to have a string method that's going to apply to this. So we've actually already talked about methods and all that. So uh, this is relatively simple. But in this case, if you have a string method, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to actually modify anything within the, the struct? Or are we just trying to get some values out of it? Well, we're just trying to get some values out of it. So in this case, we can use a value receiver. So let's go ahead and func. Um, and then we're going to do L for a location type. Uh, that was an under, underscore L. That looks kind of weird and sublime, but anyways. Um, and then it's a string with a capital S of string type, which is what it's going to return. And then it's just going to return a format dot S print F L dot location. And save that. And then unless I'm somewhat mistaken, let's just rerun it real quick. Right. Okay. So now that we've given it a string method, it actually has strings. Lo and behold, we actually have string URLs. Also, let me just pull up the S printf uh, here. There you go. Anyway, it basically it's just going to format that. It does what it says. Formats according to a format specifier and returns the resulting string. Basically, you're going to use that pretty much every time uh, you will have a string method. If you want to convert some sort of struct thing to a string. Uh, this would be uh, the way you're going to use it. To be honest, I've not really seen any other reason you would use sprintf. That's the only time. Um, I'm sure there are more. I've not been in Golang for a really long time, but that <laughs> appears to me to be the, uh, the main use. Okay, so now that we've made it that far, we've got a... It's a slice, but I'm, I'm going to probably call it a list a few times, but that's what it looks like to me. It's a list of stuff, right? But it's definitely a slice. There's no comma there, so I guess we could call it not a list. Um, anyway, what we need to do now is iterate through these values and get those URLs and then visit those URLs, and because those are sitemaps, get the URLs and maybe titles or something from those sitemaps and so on. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. Uh, obviously, we need to learn how to actually uh, loop over um, this list first. So that's what we're, we're going to be talking about loops next. Uh, the other thing I want to show you guys real quick before the end of the tutorial, if you, if for whatever reason, you can't access the, uh, the Washington Post sitemap and you still kind of wanted to follow along, here is what you could do. You could say var uh, wash post XML equals... Uh, slice of bytes, byte, uh, and then it's going to be a multi-line paste, boom, done. Let's go ahead and move that underneath the import just to make it right. And then uh, basically at bytes, you could say bytes each equals wash post. I don't think that's what we wanted. I think it was like wash post XML. Yeah. Uh, get rid of this unmarshal bytes. We're, we've probably got some import that we don't need, but let's just run it really quickly. Undefined bytes and IU util bytes equals that's kind of oh colon equals. Uh, and then it was IO util that we didn't need, so I can just remove that real quick. Bring this back up. Run again. Oh, come on, just please work this time. I don't have time for this. I just wanted to show you guys real quickly. Okay, and then that's probably going to get angry at us for using HTTP.
there we go. Okay, so just obviously it's shorter because I use a shorter XML. Um, but that's how you can just still follow along if and when this, this site map goes away. Also, it'd be kind of nice because you can come in here and you can maybe add to your new tags. Kind of play around with it, you know. Um, I encourage you to try your own site map index. Try to figure out how to build the structs and all that because that's not the most intuitive thing ever in my opinion. But anyway... Uh, that's all for now. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about looping because we want to be able to loop over that list. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next Go tutorial.